Now, covariance was a subject that I was uh, asked to uh, cover. Uh, what are what is covariance? It's a it's a question about wh how do reference frames affect physical laws? Does the motion of the observer, in other words, uh, affect whether your physical laws are correct or not? Mathematically, we could say if I have an equation which involves the motion variables and I ask if I change the coordinate system, like from Cartesian to polar, is the equation still the same form? Uh, does a coordinate system change like Cartesian to polar? If it doesn't change, then we have weak covariance because all you're doing is changing the mathematical structure. If you change the reference system, though, not the coordinate system, if you have an observer on Earth and one on a satellite, and you ask, what are, what are the changes in laws from if I go from Earth to satellite? If, that equa if those equations are the same form, then you have strong covariance. For example, if F equals MA is true on Earth, is it true on the satellite? where F prime equals MA prime are the measurements made on the satellite. So that's covariance. This is an important factor in physics because there are two types of reference frames. There's the Galilean frame where anything that's moving at a speed V obeys this formula. According to Einstein, in order to keep the speed of light constant, you must use Lorentz transformations, which are shown in this red box. In this chart, we're going to compare Newton and Maxwell laws according to whether we have no ether, ether, or we consider the mainstream, which is uh, Einstein's covariance. All right, if we ask, are Newton's laws covariant? Well, they obey Galilean's law, and the answer is yes. Maxwell's laws, though, the laws of electromagnetism, do not obey Galileo's law. They obey the Lorentz law if you require that the speed of light is constant. In other words, if special relativity is true. So when in the 1900s, when they knew that there was a conflict between mechanics and electromagnetism. They had a choice. Do I make Lorentz Galilean or do I make Galileo Lorentz? But what, what they chose, the mainstream choice was, we'll make Newton's laws obey Lorentz transformations. And what that means is the gamma factor, which is the square root in the denominator, which contains the V squared over C squared, that's going to be forced into the equations, even though it does not appear in the Galilean uh, equations. So, so by so by by forcing Lorentz to be used for both um, mechanics and electromagnetism. The consequence of that was that the V squared over C squared became part of what is experimentally measured because it's part of the equations, but it is not part of the equations when it's Galilean. All right, so the correct uh, prediction of covariance will be making mechanics and electromagnetism both uh, invariant uh, under Galilean transformations.